folks, welcome to AWE.TV. I'm your host, Joseph Rampola, and we are here as I am losing my voice with my good friend, Track Lord from Mateo. Track, how's it going, buddy? It's going great, Joe. Thanks for having me here. Well, listen, I, I know it's a little difficult for you to, to, to you know, get into a really long conversation. Yes. So we're going to keep it brief. I'm just kidding. Um, so two so hours? That's two hours. About two, two hours. hours. All right. So uh, tell us what is going on with Mateo. I mean, a lot of stuff lately. Last night you had this big shindig. Yeah. So tell us what's going on, buddy. So let's see. Last time we talked, uh, a lot of crazy stuff has changed. A lot of good things going for the company. Um, as you said, we just had this great uh, sort of party kickoff event last, last evening. And it's really kind of a it was sort of a, a litmus test to see how well we'd be received doing kind of like an inside AR Munich conference, but set in the Silicon Valley area. Yeah, when are you going to have that here? Uh, after <laughs> last night, um, Outlook is very good, really? as my friend the Magic 8-Ball said. Nice. Uh, I imagine we're going to look more seriously into hosting, uh, probably not anything on the level of this event, but right. definitely a little bit bigger, more demos, more resources, a little more official, but yeah. We're looking forward to. I think it's a uh, it's a pretty cool thing. And you have to have one in New York also. One in New York. Yeah, yeah. I, in case in case San Francisco is too cheap, <laughs> yeah. we'll go and have one in New York. There you um, go. Yeah, that, I mean, I'd love to have one in New York. But. Yeah, I know. So other than that, uh, basically, any, any big announcements lately? Yeah, we had we had a couple. So starting back in February, the Mobile World Congress, uh, we announced something really huge for us. Uh, we announced the first ever augmented reality chipset dedicated to accelerating augmented reality experiences on semiconductors. Um, huge. Huge move for us, a really sort of tertiary industry. Uh, we've been in software for 10 years. Um, all the stuff we've done with hardware has really been horizontal, but now we actually designed and essentially released into the market this uh, really cool piece of technology. Uh, without getting too crazy technical, just as a brief over overlay, essentially all those things that we do with augmented reality devices and everything around in this room uh, relies for the most part on the CPU. Absolutely. And when you're talking camera display or cameras and display and internet processing and throwing signaling traffic, you're going to burn through your battery pretty fast. So number one uh, priority for us is battery consumption. How do we reduce that by optimizing the CPU? Number two is uh, how do we make it faster and better? Um, and so with this chip, you divert the power from the CPU and we've seen speed increases up to 6,000%. So we're talking about any sort of little lag or just kind of like jitter just disappears entirely. And it's like your device literally becomes a window into the virtual world. It's, it's like great. the content was just always there. And it's really cool stuff. Well, when you start affecting hardware, I mean, good things are going to happen when you start doing something like that. So outstanding. Um, so you, what number have you been here for all of these uh, conferences? Is this number? This is my third. Is this your third? Yeah. I've been asking a lot of people this question because I'm curious of their perceptions. How has this changed from that, the first time that you've been here, this conference? Well, the first time I was here, first time I was here, it was certainly a more intimate gathering. Um, definitely more people, what we call AR insiders, you know, the people that are already involved in the space, coming together, sort of like a, kind of like a forum. This year, and even to some extent last year, uh, first of all, I don't know if anyone's looked at the carpet, it looks amazing. <laughs> it's um, serious. It changes the entire room. You, you really know? notice, huh? I love, yeah. I mean, you know, it's just a, it's it's the difference between you know just some people hanging out in a hotel and an actual really nice, really professional looking conference. So hats off to Ori for making this happen because uh, Matteo definitely is impressed. And just the vibe in general. You've got the announcement of the Google glasses. You know, you've got the all these sort of wearable computing initiatives. A lot of the people you see around here, Meta. Epson's back this year, really big. They've got a bunch of really cool partners uh, doing stuff with their Muverio uh, BT100s. You've got Vuzix releasing monocular display. Uh, that's another cool thing. So it turns out uh, Vuzix M100 just runs our software pretty much out of the box. They got this whole really cool demo with SAP that allows warehouse people, basically they put the M100 on, they get an inventory list, it just feeds right to their display. They walk up to the box, they scan it, and it just updates. Crazy. And they just do that until their list is done, and you know they get indoor navigation to uh, among the warehouse, like safety notifications from the forklift and stuff. So, get a lot of really, uh, I'd say, uh, positive outlook on the industry, and I think a lot of it has to do with these kind of new hardware interfaces, which is a nice segue into what we're trying to do with hardware. Because when we talk about any semiconductor platform, you know, we're looking to the future with wearable computing as well. Let me ask you that. L last year, you guys were unveiling 
the accuracy of, of some of the tracking, and I think you had like a wireframe yeah. and that sort of thing. Where have we moved since that time? So the snapping <coughs> algorithm, yeah. yes. So the snapping algorithm is actually, it's still a work in progress. Um, it's, it's a very difficult uh, animal, basically. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to provide that missing link between the GPS and the vision-based experiences. You get geolocated in some way to, let's say, the Santa Clara Convention Center, but once you're here, you can't really use GPS anymore. Right. So you need that additional, additional you know, something to allow you to tightly align digital and virtual content on something like this. Mm -hmm. So for a while, at least when we showed it last year, we were working with kind of a, a manual user-driven approach, where once you're close enough to the thing and you see the model, you just kind of move it and it snaps into play. Then we started to think, well, maybe we can make it more intuitive than that. We can make it automatic. So then, you know, we laser map the big area, try to get these sort of wireframe data and have it just click it in by itself just when the camera moves over it. It works and it's there. As to when it's going to be available maybe in our SDK remains to be seen. I anticipate not that far down the road. You know, it's definitely one of our number one research priorities. And uh, it's something that I think is really important, uh, especially when you're using augmented reality, natural kind of markerless augmented reality in urban environments, you know, as sort of a compelling use case. I remember talking and you were just, just saying about how much you love your developers. Yeah. <clears throat> Where you'd like, oh my gosh, I just, I walk in there, I talk to them, you know, we, we we shoot the breeze and we really, you know, get into real issues. So I know how much fun you're, you're having <clears throat> as, yeah. my, as my voice disintegrates. Yeah. <laughs> you need some, you need some, are you going to pull a Mark Rubio in a second or uh, just? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, you can't have the water. You can't have the water. Uh, actually, it's funny you speak <clears throat> of it. Uh, really cool. At our booth today, we have um, a guy named Corey King. Uh, he's from uh, a company called Zenfry which has this new Kickstarter AR game called Clandestine Anomaly. And it's built on the Matayo platform, and it is one of the- Is that the zombie game? No, 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 this okay. is, this is uh, think about sort of a GPS-based game, something like Shadow Cities or Google's Ingress, but with a vision component. So you have the, the maps interface, and you're actually seeing the content, in this case it's you know, the classic aliens versus mankind, and we're all in a war you know, to save the future of humanity. Of course. I love this stuff. Uh, so you're watching the sort of aliens crawl across the map, and then you can take your tablet and just move it up, and they're right in front of you. Right. They're uh, geolocated right in front of you, so you sort of have this new interaction with what otherwise, you know, just a, a GPS game. And then he's also taken, or their company rather, has also taken the 2D image stuff and used that to drive the narrative. So you'll look at uh, one of the symbols from the game, and suddenly a video will come up with a woman right. talking, and she's telling you information about the game and sort of really driving the narrative. It's, it's really cool stuff. Uh, I definitely recommend you go check it out. Cool. He's going to be at our booth will. both days. We're really lucky to have him here. Just last minute thing, he flew out here, and he's just chilling at our booth, uh, telling people about it. So easiest way for people to learn more about Mateo? www.mateo.com. Uh, we also we have a blog. It's the augmented blog. WordPress.com, very long name, great content. Uh, and then of course we're, we're constantly updating our YouTube page with really cool videos. And uh, you know, we've been pretty active in the conference circuit this year. You guys have been very busy. We, yes, I've been very busy. And you guys, yeah. have, been, you guys have been growing also? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we're hiring new R&D people. We just opened, that's a huge announcement actually. We just opened a new office in Dallas uh, a couple, about a month ago. Nice. And that's uh, specifically to do with the, uh, the hardware initiative. Cause we're really trying to, you know, uh, be in close contact with people like Texas Instruments. It's just like, it's a huge hotbed of mm -hmm. hardware and uh, chipset work that's going on down there. So we've got a few people down there already. We're trying to grow it a little bit and really concentrate on how to make those chipsets, you know, better and better. Just get those things in mobile phones and we can have this natural, always on, always augmented reality thing going. So have you presented already or are you going to? Uh... I'm actually, I, uh, I'm not entirely sure where I'm speaking. Um, I, I think what uh, what I'm here to do is uh, present Matayo's nominations in the Aubies to the awards Nice. Tonight. Any predictions? Uh, you know, the competition is very fierce this year. I have to say it. It's, it's always been, you know, really, like, last year it seemed more of like a friendly, fun thing. This year it seems like, you know, people are in it. 20 Gs, baby. Yeah. $20,000? Okay. Well, I didn't even really know that. I just, I, I you know, it's tradition for me. But we actually uh, were in five different categories out of six. The only thing that we're not in is the augmented, best augmented video. But we've got uh, the IKEA campaign and best augmented reality campaign. We've got Corey's actually submitted his game for the best augmented reality app, That's mobile not that, app. That's not that butterfly thing. 
Remember the one year the butterfly thing? The I butter. Think? Oh, uh, Sander. Okay. Is that Sander I doing so. the uh, doing the three D printing thing? Yeah, uh, there was a butterfly, butterfly thing. thing. It was like three, two years ago, three years ago. Oh, oh, I think I recall that. Yeah, you, you probably forgot it. Yeah, yeah, I, I forget it too. We've got the uh, the AR engine as the uh, best augmented hardware, and we've got the Mitsubishi electric uh, enterprise app. Oh, so you're you're loaded. You have to win on something. Well, we got. I mean, hopefully, you think like you know, <laughs> it's always it's always fun to be nominated in every category and not take home anything. But uh, um, I think. It's, I think it's going to be a lot of fun no matter what happens. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how judging is going this year, but yeah, our outlook is positive. I mean, we're really passionate about this, and that's why we do it. So we try to bring that passion to our work and to the software that we offer developers. And so hopefully, well, if my if my voice doesn't die on me, um, it slowly is. Uh, I don't think there's anybody who loves AR more than, than you. Oh, yeah, thank you. So, maybe, all right. maybe my colleague Brendan Scully. Um, just by a little bit. You think so? Yeah. He's, or Danica. He's young, though. Danica, maybe. Danica definitely loves yeah. AR. She loves AR too. Thank you, Danica, <coughs> being every single one of our product videos. Nice. So that's a lot <laughs> yeah. of fun. Nice. All right, buddy. It was great talking to you. Excellent, Joe. Thank you very much. Take care, Travis. Always a pleasure. Bye, buddy.